Good morning, comrades. Today I am joined by this wonderful man that you see more often on my videos and you know that whenever he's in my videos, we're gonna talk about the latest fabulous things of Manta Racing, just as fabulous as his beard. So we're gonna, today is our main subject, the Porsche GT3 Cup MR car, the updated, the latest 992 model. Uh, but before we're gonna go on that into detail, I wanna say a quick thank you to Robert who actually was here a couple of weeks ago and he wanted to make a video on that car and then you said actually like, well, 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 actually Misha wanted to make a video on it because ever since December when the car was unveiled in Portimao, I believe, from Portugal, uh, I said like, hey, what is this? I and mean, it was a rotor car, which kind of took the internet by force, I would say. I really wanted to make a video on it, but then like the season stop came, then the world situation happened, and well, now finally we can do it. So thank you, Robert, for being a bro on YouTube, but he's still gonna make a video, which is going to be about considering buying this car from owner's perspective or future owner's perspective. So unless you haven't yet, make sure to give him a follow and subscribe on YouTube and uh, to find out more content than that. But first, well, today, take it away. What is this? It's probably like the most common question that you get. What is this car? Well, this car is, as you said, the Porsche GT3 Cup MR. It's the 991.2 model, not the 992, like you mentioned. Just oh, there. no. Oh, oh, everyone is going to, yeah, cut, make new video. Uh. <laughs> we just have to be on the technical side and, and uh, tell this to guys. I, no. I'm just like dealing too much with 992 recently, so yeah, maybe. All that. good. <laughs> so um, when we are talking about uh, Porsche motorsport cars in general, uh, probably we have to do a short preview about the lineup uh, of Porsche. Um, Porsche starts in the motorsport category with the GT4 Club Sport, mm -hmm. uh, which we did a video for. Exactly, also check the, it in the upper right corner if you have missed it. Also with the MR package on it for the SRO homologation. Then there is the GT3 Cup car, which is uh, well known for all the Carrera Cup and Super Cup series worldwide. Mm -hmm. That Moritz is racing, by the way, our friend exactly. from the channel. Yep. Uh, then we have the GT2 RS Club Sport, which is the new model introduced last year. Um, we have the GT3 R, which is the car for the GT3 category, like our Grello and the cars running in ADAC GT Masters, VLN and uh, GT3 series worldwide. And then we have the RSR, which is the WEC car in GTE class, which runs in the complete WEC season, but also in Le Mans and the classics. Um, here we have a car, which is something in between. Um, it's, uh, we would call it in between a GT3 Cup and a GT3 R. Um, the idea of the car was to produce a car which tends performance-wise towards the R, but in terms of running costs, it roughly stays with the cup. So what we did is we added some bits and pieces uh, well known from the R, uh, but we kept the main specs of the cup car. So the main specs of the cup car are the chassis, of course, and it's the engine and the gearbox and the complete interior. So once you step into the car, uh, except some smaller options from us, you will find an environment of the standard cup car. We are also using the standard engine and we the, use the standard uh, gearbox. So this means also the run times of 100 respective uh, 60 hours are still in the car. Which is roughly a full season of racing on the Nürburgring, roughly, but at least yeah, with some extra testing on top. Absolutely. So what we added to the car is, of course, you can see it by the look, we put a body kit on the car, but we also had some additional parts uh, starting at the ABS system mm -hmm. because the standard cup car, even in 2020, still doesn't have uh, an ABS system. Really? Yeah, it's, um, I think it's kind of philosophy in a Mark I series uh, where you want to find the highest skilled drivers and the highest competition that it's all about the driver. And of course, ABS is a big part of that. Hmm. Um, at the same time, we added an adjustable suspension on the car, three-way adjustable. It's our development uh, in cooperation with KW Suspensions. Which Can we have a look uh, at it maybe? Of course. Yeah, <clears throat> 
So here you can see the external reservoirs with the low speed and high speed compression adjusters and we are also using uh, rebound adjustment in the car. Um, as we already opened the bonnet, you can see another massive change in the car because on the cup car, you know that there are three radiators in front. And uh, once you see some incidents on the track when you know people touch each other or during the hard fight, uh, for the positions. When they um, don't respect the social distancing rules. Absolutely. <laughs> they uh, at least always damage one radiator and then it's game over. Because usually the, the two small radiators are here that you would see next to the, yeah, underneath the headlights in front of it, right? Exactly. Roughly. Exactly. At the same time, when you open the bonnet at a cup car and you look into the trunk, you can see the third post of the air check system, mm -hmm. which is now erased or just substituted by another two posts here in the front. Um, the background is that we wanted to erase the three radiators in the front and exchange it with a big radiator in the trunk because the big radiator um, is in a more secure place. So this means if this radiator is damaged, you are in serious trouble. Anyway, yeah. Not just because of the radiator, because you're missing the first 50 centimeters of the car. <laughs> <clears throat> and now it's like hidden behind the, the front cr Absolutely. crash structure, you would say. Absolutely. Uh, then what we are using is a tank tower in here. The tank tower is, is kind of comfort, but at the same time, uh, depending on regulations, like uh, in the VLN, you have to refuel the car with a standard uh, fuel gun. Mm -hmm. And therefore we have a, a quick access valve in there. Uh, you also have to use this in the Creventic series. Mm -hmm. And in case you have to use uh, the homologated bottles like in uh, Porsche Sports Cup, where the car is also homologated, then you can just exchange the upper plate to a different uh, valving and then you can use uh, the bottles as well. Nice. Um, in addition to that, we also exchanged the wheels. Uh, we are running the wheels of the GT3R, not the latest 991.2 model, but it's the one from the 991.1 model. Um, we are running a wider wheel on the front uh, and we are also running a wider wheel on the rear, uh, just from the rim side, uh, on the front also from the tire side. But at the same time, the front axle itself is completely stock cup car. So we are using uh, the steering rack and everything from the cup car. We just increased the width of the car by the wheels. And as you can see, you still have the Porsche calipers on, but uh, the brake discs and the pads look a little bit different. Um, they are orange. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen blue, green, yellow, but it's the first time I see orange brake. Uh... Yeah, the, the background is that with the new ABS system, which uh, we developed in cooperation with Bosch, uh, which is based on the M5, um, we also uh, developed and introduced new discs and pads in order to um, optimize the brake power. And uh, therefore you see different uh, design of the disc and also different colors of the pads. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you said the wheel is wider, how much wider over the regular cup car? Um, the regular uh, cup car on the front uses a 27 wheel mm -hmm. uh, and we're using a 30 wheel. Mm -hmm. So especially That's the, the size front, of the tire, right? Yeah, You're exactly. referring to. Uh, especially on the front, uh, this makes the car more stable and uh, easier to control. Um, this is from the technician side. Then from the <clears throat> aero package side, I just closed the bonnet so we can take a complete look at. Um, we exchanged uh, body parts on the car, starting at the front end cover, which we designed in the, um, uh, the cup design. But of course, uh, we modified it to the, the wider car in general, but also the adaption for the center radiator. So, and I see since you removed the radiators, you don't need the intakes anymore. Intakes, so now you have actually stickers over it. Or it's, no, it's actually painted. This is the, like the, the, the base is carbon, right? Underneath. The base is carbon, yeah. So this means um, we just put the white wrapping on and we just uh, cut out 
the carbon fiber parts which look like uh, the air intake? I think it's the best, like you know, the, the best fake air intake I've seen in my, in my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because with, it's functional, it's aerodynamic. Yeah, of yeah. course. And I mean, it's like if you close it completely, then it's just a massive white uh, plain yeah. uh, surface. And therefore, you know, uh, in the very last uh, you always have to take a little bit of look at on the design. Exactly. Uh, then with the front end cover, it goes the fenders, which we developed uh, with the louvres and also with the different headlights. Uh, the headlights, the idea was also uh, cost-wise because we don't use a complete headlight from the cup car, which is uh, quite expensive, but we're... Uh, which is basically a street car unit, right? Yeah, it's a street car unit and here, in case of an accident, in most cases, there is just the, the glass which is uh, damaged and you can exchange this separately. And the same idea you have in the GT4 Club Sport MR, right? Yeah, you, you exactly. It was the, the same. Yeah. I mean, it's always pros and cons if you're using uh, standard or streetcar products because it's, it's easy to get access to. You can purchase it in the Porsche Center, but at the same time, maybe they are a little bit more expensive like the pure race uh, developments. Then we have the bonnet, the bonnet of course with the, um, with the air vents on it because we want to exhale the, the air which goes through the radiator. We also designed this in a way that uh, the, the air is getting left and right towards the car. Um, then to avoid the engine overheating. Exactly. Then uh, we have the side skirts. Side skirts are part of the underbody floor, um, which is completely closed and it also uses uh, a front splitter and a rear diffuser uh, underneath the car. Uh, then we have the side extensions uh, for the rear wheels in order to make uh, the car wider. <laughs> Those are like one of the biggest extensions I've seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, especially on the rear, we have, of course, the rear bumper, which is adapted to the wider uh, stance of the car. And we're also using a modified engine deck lid as well as a swan neck uh, wing with the wing support brackets on it. This the mount system of the wing reminds me of the GT2 RSMR. Is this kind of similar where you mount the wing directly to the chassis or? Uh, this is always done on the cup car. Okay. So it doesn't matter whether you have swan neck or uh, original, then you always mount it directly to the chassis. Mm. Yeah, well, obviously for the, the best downforce, the best effect and zero flex. Can we look uh, inside? Of course. As I said, the car still looks uh, like a standard cup car, except uh, some uh, options which we added to the car. Like you can see the stickers uh, on the uh, center console as well as on the steering wheel. We used our 24 hour sticker set on it, um, which more or less is illuminated by um, black light. And therefore it's possible to see the so you have additional black light system on yeah. top. Uh, this is uh, installed on the roof and therefore you can see the labeling on the stickers also during a 24 hour race at night because um, there is no interior lightning in general. Uh, then you can see we added a drinking system to the car, which mm -hmm. you can see here. Which um, you can also purchase separately, right? Of course, you can purchase it for any car. Um, you have an isolated hose with a connection at the driver's side where you can disconnect the radio as well as the drinking system with one click. Uh, then we have uh, included a video system, which is also mounted with a plate and... Uh, can see it here with the ah, black box. Ah, there we go. <clears throat> Race logic. Uh, which is also included in here. And uh, yeah, some that's more or less the options which we include in the car. Some people are gonna maybe ask like, why do you have such a massive battery on a race car? Uh, well, it's quite easy, it's bulletproof. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, and as most of the race series, they give a minimum weight of the car. Um, then it's not that important just to be super light with the battery mm -hmm. uh, because in general then it's always more expensive if it's light. Exactly, and um, then you can actually put the, the weight where you want it to have, which yeah, is in this case on the passenger and side. As on the passenger side, there is, 
anyway a miss of weight uh, mm -hmm. compared to the driver's side. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <clears throat> so in terms of this all beautiful package, the, the most frequently question that people want to know, how much do I have to pay for all of this? How many kidneys? Um, well, in general, there are, we have to divide a little bit into the, the, the different models. So we have a, a cup or stand-up model, base model, mm -hmm. uh, which is 312,911. 911, 911. Um, just like the, the Le Mans car, I think it's not <laughs> only the difference, it's the other way around, the 911 <laughs> starts in the front, Yeah, 911,000. Exactly. <laughs> uh, um, coming from the base car, the GT3 Cup, which uh, is just uh, underneath 200,000 euros, 100, uh, 196 mm -hmm. or 97. And uh, you will get the whole kit. Uh, the installation is included. So you more or less fetch the car here, like you can see it in here. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, if you already have a cup car, it's possible to purchase the package itself um, and install it on your current cup car. Then we have a SP Pro version of it. Important to be noted, uh, the package will be installed by you. You cannot just buy uh, parts and have it uh, yeah, kit we, car. We, in general, we always recommend to bring the car to us. Yeah. yeah. Um, but honestly, most of the teams and customers, they purchase a complete car because one of the facts, which is quite interesting, once you buy such a car, we use as a base car a brand new cup car mm -hmm. and as the teams and everybody knows that cup cars are not really uh, available in uh, big mint numbers, conditions uh, as well of course it they always prefer to have more or less a brand new car with zero hours on it and they just make their own history on the car mm -hmm. uh, then there is the sp pro version the SP Pro version uses a bigger split on the front, uh, uses a wider wing on the rear, uses canards on the front, so we add a little bit more downforce to the car. Uh, That's basically the so-called rotor car that yeah, was presented. Exactly, the rotor Portimo. car is the, the one with the wider or the bigger aero package. And we also have the option of a bigger tire on the front in height. Even bigger. Yeah, now we are using just a, a different height. Okay. So we are using 680 instead of 650. Yeah. Um, and then there is the SP Pro Plus car, which fits into the SP Pro class in VLN, where we add uh, traction control and an anti-lift system. Um, What's an anti-lift system? Well, anti-lift system in easy words is that uh, the electronic of the car, which is connected more or less to the traction control, will regulate as soon as the front end of the car lifts, uh, it will regulate the power of the car just to avoid any airborne mm. of the front of the car. Like we've seen in the past. And it could be also added as a, a new excuse for driver excuse book. My air lift system kicked in, anti-lift system kicked in at front car, and that's why I didn't, like, yeah. wasn't fast enough. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately we didn't uh, pay attention to the downhill airborne time but yeah <laughs> it's at least a good excuse <laughs> <laughs> so like you mentioned you the base car is basically running the sp7 and then you can go sp pro with with uh, different versions of the car but suppose someone is watching who is not nervous related you I have audience who is not interested in nervous hmm, interesting uh but like can they do like run the car anywhere else in the world yeah, of course, we have uh, the car running in the uh, Creventic series, 24 hours. Uh, we have cars running in the Porsche Sports Cup. Uh, but we also have cars running, for example, in series in the US, um, where uh, there are different classes where you can run the car. And last but not least, we have lots of customers. They just run their cars for fun uh, as a, an alternative to a standard cup car because you know they came maybe for a, from a street car and they wanted to step into a race car and of course with all the options like the ABS system the traction system um, and uh, the wider stance it's uh, maybe for amateur drivers easier to drive with the car uh, than with the standard cup car without anything. We even figured out that when we compare lap times from a GT3 Cup, a Cup MR and an R, uh, 
and uh, we check the difference between a factory driver and an amateur driver. Uh, the amateur drivers are quite okay uh, from the time split to a factory driver in this car because on the cup car, as I said, ABS, no traction control, narrow body, and on the R, the amateur drivers in general are struggling with the high amount of downforce. Mm. So this is the, the perfect in-between solution uh, between those twos. And of course, at later times when you get familiar with it, step up to a GT3R is always an option. Yeah. Now, in case someone is in the market for this car, how does the purchasing process work? Do I need to have my own race team? Do I need to like be, have like 20 Porsches in my garage before I be considered as a customer? Or can I just shoot you an email and I can have one? Well, honestly, uh, lots of people didn't believe, but in case you want to have such a car, you just uh, contact us and we get one for you. So what we have is, as the cup car in general is quite restricted in numbers, we have a certain amount of cars blocked and uh, we are happy to supply those cars uh, as an MR version only. So mm. please don't call us, say, I want to buy an MR, but without the MR, I want to <laughs> just have a cup car. This is impossible, but uh, for an MR, uh, just feel free to contact us and uh, we are happy to supply. In general, we supply worldwide, except the US. Mm -hmm. uh, reason for this is that in the US, we have an exclusive partner called Porsche Motorsport North America. Uh, they are um, experienced and uh, we trained them uh, in cooperation uh, with our engineering stuff. And uh, they are happy to build cars and they already did and they are running in different uh, series and states in the US. Mm -hmm. but basically what you're saying like anyone can purchase it if someone is from Australia you build the car here ship it to them if it's someone from US you will forward them to the Porsche North America exactly. and they will build the car there and anywhere else in the world people need to add the shipping fees on yeah. top potential customers are either race teams but mm -hmm. even like gentleman drivers the big advantage of the car is as we're talking about the base cup car that every team which uh, runs a cup car can also run a cup MR. You know, with the GT3R, the current cars, meanwhile, they require so much knowledge and so uh, much tooling, engineering, that this car is more or less bulletproof and easy to handle, even on an amateur level. So basically, you don't need to own a race team, you can just buy it and you can run it at your track days if you would want to say. Of so. course, I mean, there are numerous uh, teams around there who are able of, of doing cup cars. But if you want to just, you know, get in a, in a professional environment, you can either call us directly. I mean, we have a customer sports department, but you also can uh, get into this by uh, joining the GT track days mm -hmm. um, or the GT race car experience where you just can participate with your own car or you just can get such a car for a day as a rent car okay. and then you can experience the performance of it. You get a professional environment with your engineers, your technicians and your data engineer. So there are lots of uh, um, individual uh, solutions uh, to get experience with the car. That's cool. I like that you offer this car as a rental or at least like a possibility to experience it before buying it. Although I must say probably the experience itself going to be very expensive because once you drive it, you'll be so in love with it that you end up buying it. That's what I have experienced with many similar cases. Um, but if we go the other way, so we said like, okay, you, anyone can buy it and have it and uh, drive it. Uh, just for fun, but in case someone wants to go more professional and they say to say you live in Australia, again, I love to use Australia. Okay, let's say New Zealand, it's even further away. Uh, they, and they want to have this car here stored and operated by either you or race team. Are there any possibilities like that? Yeah, of course. As we're running uh, our customer racing department, we're happy uh, to do a solution for this. I mean, we have customers, they purchase the car no matter which model and they just uh, store it with us. They say, I want to do this race, this race, I want to participate in 24 hours, whatever. And uh, we're happy to organize the complete environment and it's more or less an arrive and drive solution. So they just show up Friday, they enjoy driving Friday, Saturday, 
and uh, they leave afterwards and we take care about the rest. Nice, nice. Well, I guess we pretty much covered everything. Um, yeah, is there anything else that we forgot about? Um, just as you mentioned all the options which you saw in there, as we developed such a car and we more or less we switched a little bit from a pure race team also to a supplier um, and to a, to a partner of Porsche in some categories, we also do offer uh, parts for teams and for drivers uh, because simply there was the demand. Yeah, mm. I mean, you sell such a car and then uh, there is one guy and saying, what's the valve in the side window? <laughs> and you tell them, well, that's the, vi the valve for the air check system. And he says, well, how do I operate that? And then you tell him, well, you need a pressurized bottle with a lens and you put this in and the car lifts up. And he said, well, that's amazing, but where do I get that pressurized bottle? And there you go. So more or less we just, or we do not only offer cars, but we also offer some equipment and we also offer some options for the car and in the car, which we call our equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, Can because, you just find it on your website? Yeah, there is a complete catalog on, your web, on our website and uh, soon also in our web shop, uh, where we just offer this because it's, it's, there was the demand and we're a quite technical company and we always uh, just react on the demand on the market. So I can also buy this uh, window foil? Of course, for, for you can buy car. the window foil, um, you can buy the drinking system, you can buy the video system. For the video system, maybe quite in, uh, interesting. In general, you need for a video system, you need power, you need the connection to an antenna, you need the connection to the ICD display or the data of the car. And when you look into race cars, um, you sometimes see that it looks quite adventure-like in there. You see lots of cables for radio, for drinking system, or you don't even see a, dr a drinking system, but just a drinking pack hanging around somewhere in the roll bar. It looks like uh, a prototype car, basically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what we did is we developed an endurance cable loom, which we added to the car. The endurance cable loom is nothing else but an additional loom which offers the plug and play connections to all our options. So this mm. means if you order a video system or drinking system of us or a 24 hour lightning in the front, you don't have to take care about uh, powering and cabling those parts because with the loom, there is always a connection already there and you just plug it in and it works. Nice. So basically for all the questions regarding this car and all the merch, just go check out Manta Racing website, I would say, where you, you're going to have a, a web shop soon, you said as well. Yeah, we will have a web shop soon because, you know, starting from shirts and ending on cars or at least equipment for cars, we get so many inquiries and people require, of course, details and pictures and pricing and everything. So we will introduce our own web shop in the near future. Uh, where we can also offer uh, our merch stuff because in merch we are quite technical, which means the uh, range of products is quite limited at the moment, but uh, we will start. But demand is definitely high yeah. because everyone keeps asking me like, hey, where did you get Manta shirt or the Pink Pig shirt or etc. Can people also buy the stickers for uh, the aero stickers on the car? Unfortunately not. This is also a quite frequently asked question. The thing is that uh, we get inquiries, of course, from race cars, but also from street cars, from model cars, from whatever cars. And uh, therefore we decided to more or less protect the aero design just for our cars and for the Grello cars or for the MR cars in general, because we want to make sure if you see uh, a car with that aero design out there on track, you always can be sure that there is somebody from Mantai around and uh, there will be the performance and the support which we uh, offer and which we think it's mandatory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have the, the Grello, which is, uh, stands for green and yellow, the GT3 R car. You have the GT3 Cup MR Pro, the Rotor, which is like red and orange. Yeah. And someone can maybe like suggest a couple of more color combination words in the comments. The, that could be like a nice call to action. Um, yeah, what, what else is there to mention? Uh, make, oh yeah, maybe you can implement this design on production street cars by MR. Like I believe you have the GT3 RS.2 MR coming up soon. 
Uh, I heard so. Uh, the thing is that on the street cars, as you can see on the GT2 RS MR and on mm. the GT3 MR, we always are a little bit like, you know... Conservative. Conservative. Uh, yeah. I mean... Humble. Humble is probably yeah. better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we are, we are quite... Uh, uh, how do I say... Uh, quite happy with the golden wheels on the GT3 or uh, on the, the GT3 MR, for example. Oh, yeah, yeah. But in general, it's always, you know, it should be serious and it don't it shouldn't be clowny or something mm. because, you know, at least performance and lap times and power speaks for themselves. Oh yeah, that, that, that's a very nice, I would say, one-liner and like a main message to end this video, like a half an hour long, everything you need to know about the, the new GT3 991.2 GT3 Cup MR. Yes. Did I get this right this time? Yeah, sounds good. So that was, yeah, that was also the purpose of this video. Learn, teach me how to pronounce the, the, the technicalities of it. Very good. And in case you have any further questions, make sure to follow and uh, email if you want to like to buy this car or a piece of merch, Manta Racing. And thank you very much for this video and hope next time maybe we'll do something on the GT3 RS MR when it's going to be published, released, unveiled. Maybe Manta Racing try game, maybe? For sure, we will do as soon as it's released. Okay, mm -hmm. I like this, I like this. And uh, finally, uh, make sure to give Robert a follow who is going to make a more detailed video on this card than we did from a different perspective. So until then, see you then, bye-bye.